So our brain is the command center of our body, and it coordinates our muscle movements, our ability to think and speak and chew and swallow and coordinate our digestion. And when our immune system turns on ourselves and starts attacking our brain, we can see a lot of debilitating effects from that. Today, we're gonna to talk about an autoimmune disorder called multiple sclerosis, an, an autoimmune disorder that attacks the brain. So grab a pen and paper and study along with me today and let's get right into it. Sclerosis is um, an autoimmune disorder where the immune system, instead of attacking foreign invaders from our body like bacteria and pathogens like viruses that attack us, it gets confused and it starts thinking that our brain cells, specifically the neurons of our brain, are foreign invaders. So the immune system starts attacking the brain and breaking down um, the, the, neuro, the, the neurons of our brain, which leads to brain degeneration. So multiple sclerosis, if you look at the word, let's just break that down. Multiple means many, sclerosis means plaques. And so there's multiple uh, plaques or lesions on the brain that happens as the body breaks down its own brain, as it attacks its own brain. So you can see here from this MRI scan what a normal brain looks like and what a brain with multiple sclerosis with many plaques would look like. So about 400,000 people in the U United States have multiple sclerosis. It affects women more than men, as do most autoimmune disorders. And typically this is diagnosed between the ages of 20 to 50. And like almost all autoimmune disorders, there's some genetic component plus a trigger. And so risk factors for this is genetic component, family history, if they're female or Caucasian, plus some kind of trigger, exposure to some kind of virus like the Epstein-Barr virus, smoking, stress, uh, lack of vitamin D, or a lot of environmental heat. Um, this infographic here pretty much spells out what we just talked about. Caucasians, ages 20 to 40, more women than men, um, and a higher prevalence if there's a family history. So again, the, the immune system is attacking the brain, thinking it is a foreign invader like some bacteria or virus or something that it needs to attack, but it's not, it's our brain. And so it breaks down the myelin sheath of the neuron. So here's our axon here, and the axon is this tail that comes out of these uh, brain cells, and the axon is this, has this coating on it, the myelin sheath and communication transfers through these axons in the brain to tell our body how to move and talk and digest and eat and speak and all of the things that our body does. And so the in immune system actually starts attacking the myelin sheath, breaking it down until eventually it's completely severed. And so it's like a lack of communication within the brain. And so anything that the brain would normally do then becomes impacted um, by the breakdown of these brain cells. Now there's four types of multiple sclerosis. Relapsing remitting is the most common and that happens when the, there are times of flare up when the symptoms um, come up or get worse. And then there's times of remission, relapsing, remitting. And so where there's times that it's not so bad um, where the symptoms go away altogether or they at least get a little better. And this is the most common kind, relapsing, remitting, where there's times where it's bad and times where it gets better. Secondary progressive is uh, another kind that starts out as a relapsing, remitting type of, of uh, progression, but then eventually stops. you stop having those remissions. It just kind of starts getting worse. Um, progressive relapsing and primary progressive are different kinds where um, there are no area, there are no times of remission. Things just kind of get worse from the beginning um, and continue to gradually get worse. Relapsing remitting is the most common kind. Many multiple sclerosis um, medications are geared toward those, and a lot of our treatments um, really focus on helping patients get through those relapses um, to have longer remitting times um, and times with less severe symptoms. Now, signs and symptoms of multiple sclerosis are really going to be related to what our brain does and the fact that our brain is being broken down by our immune system. So it can be things like numbness and paresthesias, vision loss, double vision, tingling, 
um, electric, electric shock sort of, sort of sensations, tremors, fatigue, dizziness, but it can also impact basically anything else that your brain is responsible for. Chewing, speaking, thinking, um, having um, healthy mental processing, um, our uh, ability to control our batter, bladder and bowel. Uh, the ability to walk and the ability to move purposefully. All of these things are going to be impacted um, by multiple sclerosis. Here's another infographic that really shows you again some of those signs and symptoms. Now it really depends on what parts of the brain those plaques are building up on, what parts of the brain are being degenerated. And so again, vision disturbances, muscle spasms, bladder and bowel dysfunction, loss of sensation, speech problems, tremors, balance and coordination issues, and mental changes. Testing and diagnostics are really related based on history and a, and a physical exam. Of course, a complete neurologic exam would be completed. And lab tests are really going to be focused on ruling out other issues. Um, sometimes multiple sclerosis is, and most neurologic um, conditions are ruled out by what's not happening. So they're going to make sure that the patient has no stroke or they have no infection going on. And we have to rule out these things before we can get to what it is. But typically it's based on symptoms as well as an MRI where the, you would notice these brain lesions. The definitive diagnosis can be hard to get to and sometimes these symptoms are difficult to pin down because they can come and go. Um, but the definitive diagnosis is gonna be based on two separate symptomatic events or MRI changes in at least two separate locations. Because remember, it's multiple plaques, right? So we have to have multiple locations in the brain. Other collaborative interventions can be non-pharmacologic. So what, what can we do to help patients that doesn't involve drugs? Well, we're gonna really focus on improving speed of recovery from attacks. Um, we're gonna focus on reducing the number of attacks and we're gonna focus on slowing the progression of the disease. So things like making sure patients are not in, um, experiencing extreme stress, extreme heat, um, that they're getting enough vitamin D and that they're getting enough sleep because all of those things can really trigger these um, relapses of their symptoms. Now we have a, quite a few medications that are used both to shorten the duration and frequency of the relapses um, and also to um, help with some of the signs and symptoms that accompany um, the relapses. So beta interferons are the first area that we're going to talk about and we're going to save a couple slides just for that. So hold on to those. That's one that uh, directly impacts the way our immune system responds. Corticosteroids are going to help immunosuppress. Remember, we've got an immune system that's on overdrive and it's, it's doing the wrong thing. So we need to slow our immune system down so it stops attacking the brain. We can do a plasma exchange. So our, uh, the, the blood of a patient with multiple sclerosis is full of antibodies that are geared at attacking the brain cells. And so if we can exchange out their plasma and replace that with donor plasma that's not so full of these antibodies that are going to attack the brain, um, hopefully we can reduce those attacks. And then other medications are going to be based on the symptoms. So if the patient's having uh, spasms, muscle spasms and tremors, uh, we can use um, muscle relaxants like baclofen or oxybutynin. We can use anticonvulsants, and sometimes patients will have seizure disorders, so seizure medications. And then we can really focus on those bowel elimination issues. So many patients with multiple sclerosis are wheelchair bound and have mobility issues because the brain's not telling the muscles how to move. And so if the patient is immobile, they are at risk for consequences of immobility, one of those being constipation. And so we can use stool softeners and laxatives to help reduce the risk to constipation based on their immobility. So that's kind of an overview of the pharmacology. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about beta interferons. Um, two examples of beta interferons would be Avinox or Revbif. Um, these are considered immunomodulators or also just called anti-MS agents because they're really focused on this disease. The way they work, mechanism of action, is that they decrease inflammatory markers that cross the blood-brain barrier into the brain um, that are causing inflammation in the brain. The more inflammation, the more the attack of the immune system. So if we can kind of break that cycle, decrease the amount of inflammation in the brain, the hopefully the immune system will stop attacking it. 
And the good news is it works. It does decrease the incidence of relapse and also decreases physical disability from MS. But really these are made for those relapsing, remitting types of multiple sclerosis where there are times where they've got flare ups and then times where they get better. And as always, drugs have side effects, right? And the good news is the side effects tend to be pretty mild, flu-like symptoms, pain at the injection site, and maybe some mood disorders, mood disturbances. And so what do we need to teach patients? Well, it's not good for pregnant patients. It's not good for growing fetuses. So we need to teach patients to avoid pregnancy and use birth control. We need to teach them to monitor for mood changes like suicidal ideation or a depression. This is an immunosuppressant. It's messing with the immune system, which puts them at risk for infection. So we need to monitor for a low white blood cell count and teach them that they are at risk for infection and to prevent getting infections, um, staying out of crowds, avoiding people who are sick, washing their hands, so on. A couple other side effects from these drugs include increased heart rate and blood pressure, anemia, vision problems, and thyroid dysfunction, things to watch out for. Complications of multiple sclerosis can be many, and it's really based on, again, think about what the brain does. Anything the brain does, that's what is getting attacked, and so those are the kinds of changes we're going to see. We can see muscle stiffness or spasm, paralysis, many patients end up wheelchair bound, problems with bowel, bladder, or sexual function, mental status changes like depression, and even seizures. As the brain is getting attacked, the brain likes being all happy and, and calm, right? And so it starts getting attacked and a lot of different changes can happen. All right, as always, let's go through the nursing process as it pertains to multiple sclerosis. All right, the first step in the nursing process is assessment. So as a nurse, if you suspected someone might have multiple sclerosis, what kinds of signs and symptoms would you notice? Well, it's gonna be any of those neurologic signs and symptoms we talked about. Um, bowel and bladder problems, uh, depression, seizures, tremors, instability with their gait, um, balance issues, uh, um, speech issues, m mood or cognit cognitive thinking issues. So um, any it can manifest as any of those symptoms and they often start out rather subtle. So we wanna be paying attention for those types of signs and symptoms. So if you have a patient that does have multiple sclerosis, um, the second step of the nursing process is nursing diagnosis. This is different than a medical diagnosis. A nursing diagnosis helps us to diagnose what's a problem that we can fix. What's a problem that we can work on? And so nursing diagnoses for med multiple sclerosis include impaired physical mobility. So think about all the things you know about the concept of mobility and the consequences of immobility. Um, tissue integrity issues, muscle atrophy, um, bowel and bladder issues, constipation, all of those things can be problems for patients with multiple sclerosis. Another nursing diagnosis is self-care deficit. Patients lose the ability to take care of themselves as they lose the ability to control purposeful muscle movements. And then finally, impaired coping. Now, unfortunately, at this time, there is no cure for multiple sclerosis, and this is a lifelong disorder that is typically degenerative. So having coping um, and the ability to manage that and deal with those life changes is going to be important for our patients. All right, the third step of the nursing process is the intervention step. And in intervention, we typically talk about three parts. What assessments are we gonna make? for a patient who already has MS. Um, what teaching are we gonna do and what actions to take? So let's get right into it. In terms of what assessments to do on a patient that already has MS, we're gonna do a complete neuro assessment. We're gonna look at their vision and eye movements. Sometimes they can have um, some nystagmus, the vision going back and forth, or they can complain of blurred or double vision. We wanna look at their skin, especially if they're having problems with mobility. We want to assess their ability to perform their activities of daily living and ask about bowel and bladder function. In terms of actions to take, we're going to encourage range of motion. That's going to help with the muscle spasticity um, and, and making sure that they're keeping their joints flexible and they're not going to have contractures due to immobility. We're going to administer those medications as prescribed. 
implement safety measures. Remember, these patients can have issues with their vision, so they may not be able to scan their area safely and notice what risk factors are there. Um, they're gonna have problems with coordination and balance. So if they get, they could trip and not be able to catch themselves as well. And they can just have muscle weakness in general or even paresthesias where they don't feel their, the, the surroundings very well. So all of these sensory perception issues, balance and muscle strength issues really pose a safety risk to this patient. And then some of them are going to need to eye patch if they're having those double vision issues. And finally, in terms of teaching, we're gonna make sure that our patients are taking the medications as prescribed, that they're having periods of rest. Um, things like heat, stress, fatigue, can, illness can all trigger another um, episode of their MS. Um, we're gonna teach them to look for those signs and symptoms of an exacerbation. We're gonna teach them visual scanning, make sure that they're scanning their surroundings, looking for anything that may cause them to fall or lose their balance. They'll need to check their water temperature because they may not have the sensory perception to tell if it's too hot. And so they could draw a bath and then burn themselves because they're not being able to feel how hot it is. Um, they need to maintain ideal body weight. So anyone who has immobility, um, if they maintain a healthy weight, they're going to have less risk for skin breakdown. Um, and so maintaining a healthy weight will help with tissue integrity and, and just being able to get around and have someone assist you. And then finally, we're gonna make sure that they fully understand their disease, the process, how it progresses, what their prognosis is, so that they can really be at the center of the knowledge of what's happening in their own body and what to expect along the way. And finally, we go to evaluation. How do we know as nurses if we're doing a good job taking care of a patient with MS? Um, how do we know if they're getting the best outcomes that they can have? Well, we're gonna know that they have, we're gonna check for compliance with medication. If they're taking their medications as prescribed, we're gonna see that they're maintaining optimal function. That they're not losing any more ability and that, that um, they're able to perform as with, within what they can do now, that they're able to perform their activities of daily living and stay at that level. That's the goal, right? and that we're seeing relief of their symptoms. So when they do have an exacerbation, that we can get relief and they can move through that exacerbation and back into remission. That's gonna do it for our chat on multiple sclerosis. Thanks for listening. And remember, you are smart, you are capable, and you are meant to be a nurse. Have a great day, see you soon.